Rain, rain, go away is what the F1 paddock sung on the opening day of the Canadian Grand Prix, which was topped bizarrely by none other than two-time world champion Fernando Alonso. From RacingNews365.com, my name is Nick Golding, and I'm joined, as always, by lead editor Ian Parks. Ian, it's been one of those very strange days in Formula 1 where it, to say it's been irrelevant is a bit, well, true. <laughs> we've not seen any real dry running we've seen no real wet running but the, the big story is Red Bull and Max Verstappen who missed the bulk of FP2 with a confirmed ERS failure an e ERS issue he's quite lucky the fact that today has been so limited in terms of the running because for Red Bull and him it's been a far from ideal day yeah, hi everyone, and uh, for those of you who are very observant, you will notice uh, I'm in my office uh, at my home, uh, not in Montreal. Um, just to explain a little bit, it's one of those Grand Prix that, uh, just for simple budgetary reasons, um, Canada being very, very expensive to attend these days. I do have a budget to consider in working for Racing News 365, a travel budget. So Canada is one of those that I've decided to duck out of. And in many respects, Nick, I'm glad in, I've not been there today. 75 minutes before FP1 started, there was a hailstorm, mid-June nearly, and a hailstorm over Montreal, followed by torrential rain. That led to uh, limited running in FP1, not helped by a red flag from Zhou Guanyu, smacking into a wall on the wet track. But as you say, coming out of the practice session overall, quite rightly, dominated by Max Verstappen and yet another issue with his Red Bull. We know that he came out of Australia with a massive problem. Um, failure there, didn't manage to finish that race. And obviously now he's going through this little difficult spell, the most, arguably you could say the most difficult spell of his time at Red Bull under the current regulations since they were introduced in 2022, simply because of how dominant he's been. Miami, he lost to Lando Norris. It was a close run thing in the following race in Emilio Orlando. And then Monaco, just not at the races. We've discovered that that RB20 doesn't ride the curbs. They were expecting similar issues here, given how significant the curbs are around the circuit Gilles Villeneuve. And he comes, uh, goes into FP2, hoping to get some running under his belt, just as the uh, just as the cars are looking to make a little bit of progress in a little bit of a dry weather window. And he quickly has to return to the pits. The wisps of smoke coming from the back of that RB20 due to an ERS, Energy Recovery System issue, which he has said is now a concern for the rest of the year. Because obviously he had that issue in Australia. Now he's got this issue with what is a new power unit as well in the back of that red Bull for this weekend. Let's not forget. So that is quite significant. So could that mean is he referring to the fact that he's talking about the rest of the year that with these um, power unit issues just starting to kick in a little bit now, is he going to be hit by, by uh, grid penalties later in the season? It's something we'll have to wait and see, of course, but a very another very difficult Friday for Max Verstappen, and that's not the first time I've said that this season. I suppose, I guess, the one thing that's in Red Bull's and Max's favour is that the, the running today has been so limited because despite you know Saturday and Sunday a rain being forecast the one thing that I guess the teams would have liked it would have been for the rain to have continued but we actually saw that in both sessions towards the end there was a dry line which meant the intermediates simply could not be used there's also a new surface at the circuit Jules Villeneuve which interestingly appears to be drying extremely quickly it's been one of those weird days that we spoke about obviously in our work chats where actually you either want it to be no rain and completely dry or no you know, sunshine and just loads of rain. So at least the teams get some data because really coming out of today, they've kind of got nothing <laughs> to a certain they, extent. They've got something. I mean, there something. was 
<laughs> yeah, FP1, as I said, was significantly disrupted. They lost the first 21 minutes because although the session started on time, they decided, or race control decided, to keep the pit exit closed. What did you make of it? Because that was a weird, thought, that was a really weird one. I thought that was really strange because if you if you know you're gonna if you know that the session is going to be delayed because of the work that was going on on track to, to clear the water and there was so much work going and, on and a lot track. of work as well. Yeah, there was there were the vehicles that were sucking up the water. There was those that were pushing the water to one side. There were marshals on track with blowers trying to dry the track. There was also marshals with brooms sweeping the leaves that had. Uh, gathered considerable all around the circuit. So if you know you're going to have a delay, why op- why keep the pit exit closed but start start the session on time? And they lost 21 minutes because of that. And it was inevitable as well that given the track conditions, guess what? We also had the red flag with Zhou Guan Yu hitting the wall in his stake. That cost, I think, about another seven or eight minutes around that. Yeah. So overall, they pretty much lost half of that session. Given they were worried about the intermediate tyre situation as well, because we know we've got those bizarre regulations around the intermediates and what can be used, what's got to be given back. Um, you know, Have they then got enough to go through the weekend, in particular when they know it's these conditions, these wet, dry showers coming in, whatever, are going to dominate over Saturday and Sunday as well. They've got to be mindful of just how much of the, the green stripe tyre that they can actually use over the course of the weekend. So there was a little bit of trepidation as do we go out, do we stay in, what do we do? Because they knew as well that FP2 was going to be wet, and that proved to be the case. Although, at least, as I say, there was a bit of a weather window. There was quite a significant amount of soft tyre running that was able to be done by a number of the drivers, uh, with Fernando Alonso seemingly um, managing to extract something from that Aston Martin, because just to give the uh, the, the viewers an idea, Mike Crack, who has appeared in the team principals press conference in between the two sessions, pretty much was far from happy with what has been occurring with that car, pretty much saying they've got so much work to do that it could, they can't say how long it's going to take, that um, they're not getting the right performance out of that car, the drivers aren't happy with it. And so at least they've got something because they finished one three because Alonso Fernando Alonso was first, Lance Stroll was third. It's something for them to build on for this weekend after what has been a very lean time for them. So, but just to get back to your original point, Nick, there has at least been some data gathered. They have yeah. got something on which to build going into the weekend simply because these conditions, these showers coming in, then it drying out perhaps are going to dominate over the weekend as well. It's going to be a fascinating weekend weather-wise, which is then going to make sure it's going to be a fascinating weekend on track because it's going to be about making the most of your opportunities when they arrive. As we said in the podcast, this race just knows how to throw up something exciting. To quickly run through the top 10, because it is a bit of a wacky one, for being completely honest, the top 20 was actually spread by five seconds, which is unheard of to be honest in, in F1 these days Alonso was fastest as we've said with George Russell in second Lance Stroll in third Leclerc in fourth Daniel Ricciardo fifth Kevin Magnussen in sixth Hamilton seventh Sonoda eighth with Albon and Perez completing the top 10 perhaps the biggest loser in first practice was Jack Dewan obviously nah. stood in for Esteban Ocon and free practice one as part of obviously each team's mandatory having to use a rookie session in two FP1 sessions. Dewan completed an installation lap. He then completed one lap at the end of the session to do a practice start. And that was it. It was, you know, it, it was kind of touted, you know, by a lot of media as, you know, almost like an audition potentially for Ocon's seat for next season. And unfortunately for Jack, it was just, I mean, it was a, 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 I use this word quite a lot, but it, it was just a, a nightmare. It was, it was, it was quite sad in many ways, actually. Yeah, and then hardly call it an audition in many respects because he's been with that team now for quite some time, so they know exactly what he's all about, what he can bring to them in terms of 
uh, data feedback, uh, his performance on track as well. So this was an opportunity, though, for him, bearing in mind that earlier this week, it was made clear that Esteban Ocon is out of the door at Alpine after five years. Bruno Famine making it quite clear that that was not the consequence that he quite clearly stated uh, after that accident between Esteban and Pierre Gasly on the opening lap of the Monaco Grand Prix that he was so infuriated about. Um, this was not the consequence of, this was just something that had been building as far as he was concerned. They'd been having discussions and it was just a simple case of this union, this partnership has gone as far as it can go. What Bruno did make quite clear, though, and which I thought was quite pertinent, was who he wants as a team, as a pair of drivers going forward into next season. And his words were that he wants drivers that are professional, that can communicate, that get on together, that work well together. That is something that we quite clearly know has not been the case between Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly. There's this long-standing rivalry going back to their karting days that they managed to work through early on during their time at Alpine. And quite clearly, it's just been bubbling away underneath. It finally came to its head in Monaco with that serious collision that probably was the final straw for Esteban if Bruno was having the slightest doubt in the back of his mind as to what he was going to do for next season with his driver pairing then I'm sure that that was the straw that broke the camel's back as far as he was concerned this of course has now opened the door for Jack Doohan who has been part of that uh, part of the Alpine Academy now for quite some time he's been biding his time in this reserve position now and yes it wasn't so much an audition, but it was an opportunity to at least yeah. underline to the team just what he is capable of in a Formula One car. He was in a Formula One car in Abu Dhabi at the end of last season uh, as part of his um, rookie opportunities. And this was going to be another of those opportunities today. As you say, the weather just sadly intervened. The good news for him is that um, Bruno has confirmed that there will be another opportunity later in the season for him. So he will get another FP1 outing at some stage. Unless it rains in that session as well. <laughs> Fingers crossed it doesn't fall because he's, um, I tell you what, he's such a nice guy. He really is a good guy, Joe. I think if it rains again, it might be a sign that F1 perhaps just isn't meant to be for him. But no, it'll be interesting to see how he gets on when he finally gets another chance. Ian, it's been a weird day, but it means we still have to make a bold prediction looking ahead to qualifying on Saturday. I'm going to throw it to you first. A bold, you know, I'm going to say to, not only a bold prediction, but who thinks can get pole position? Because I think that's almost bold in itself, given you know I, I, what we learned today, if, if you can even call it that. <laughs> we learned very little. <laughs> we did see that um, a few of the teams uh, had got a, a decent handle um, with regard to the track conditions. The good news is, although that track has been resurfaced. I was initially concerned when the rain started to fall. I was thinking, oh, are we going to be for a, another turkey situation where if you remember when that um, circuit came back onto the calendar during the COVID era, they'd recently had that track resurfaced. And when it rained, the bitumen oils rose to the top and we were left with like a skating rink uh, around this damn ballpark. Thankfully, that wasn't the case. This looks to be, in fairness to it, a quality track. And as you've already pointed out there Nick one that seems to dry incredibly quickly so if we are going to get those little weather opportunities where it rains and then gets dry I think the team that makes the most of those opportunities making sure they get on the right tire at the right time is going to be the winner at the end of the weekend going into qualifying you want a ball prediction I'm going to go for Oscar Piastri on ball position I like it I like it yeah. a lot yeah that's a good I think point. I'm sure oh, I'm on. pretty confident I stated that in the podcast as well. So I think you did I actually. I did. I'm pretty confident I did. I just think the way Andrea Stella was talking about him as well in the team principals press conference, he was really eulogizing about Oscar and the way he has developed this year in terms of a driver, in terms of his development especially. So 
He's looking good. I think, especially since he's got a handle on those upgrades since they came onto his car from the Imola Grand Prix onwards. As we know, Lando Norris had them uh, 100% of the upgrades in Miami. Oscar only had 50% of them. And obviously that really helped Lando win that Miami Grand Prix. And then Oscar, once he's got the upgrades on at the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix in Imola, he's looked really strong. So I think in this could be this could be a track for McLaren this weekend. That's why I'm going for Oscar on pole position. No, I like it quite a lot. I mean, it's, it's, it is good, though, I think, to point out that how good the resurfacing appears to be. And yeah. that when we look at recent venues which have been relayed, this one is top-notch from the looks of it. It's quite rare to see a circuit dry quite so quickly given how much rain and you know how the size of golf balls there were it's also for me something i've learned today is i think several drivers now know when it does rain not to cut across the grass unless they want a wave of water in their cockpit that did make me laugh a few times daniel ricardo in particular if it's a dry qualifying i'm going to go for a Charles leclerc pole position i think he's just being quietly confident there's just something about him after monaco i just think we're going to see a new side of him. If it's wet, I'm going to go Max Verstappen. Just to, I say to defy the odds, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. The fact that it's Red Bull, it's Max. Yeah, actually, a Max pole would be quite a big surprise, I think. It, I guess, bearing in mind all the talk that was coming into this Grand Prix weekend was the likely difficulties that Red yeah. Bull and the RB20 would have because of the curb riding that's required at this circuit. And curb riding was the biggest issue that hit them so hard across the Monaco Grand Prix weekend. Yes, every circuit has curbs. We know that. But at some circuits, they are more uh, prevalent than others. The circuit Gilles Villeneuve is one of those circuits where you really need a good car to go into and off those curves to get good entry and exit. And so, yes, if those problems were going to materialize again at Canada, as was expected, then Red Bull struggles were anticipated. So I fully agree that that is a relatively bold prediction by saying Max on pole, something we would never ever have come up with just a few races ago. We, we would have thought Max on pole for pretty much every Grand Prix this season, in honesty, but without using it as a bold prediction. So, yeah, fair play on this occasion. Thank you very much. Well, I guess all will be unveiled Saturday evening, for us at least, in Europe. In qualifying, be sure to check out Saturday evening is what it will be Sunday morning, actually, in all fairness. The F1 update from myself and Ian. This has been Racing News 365.com. We will see you for the next video. See you later. Take care, folks.